Hello folks, it's me Gleb Alexandrov and welcome to yet another very exciting tutorial on creativeshrimp.com and today we'll be taking a look at something amazingly spectacular, special, outstanding, groundbreaking I think it's a must-see blender tutorial, like ultimate tutorial, very beginner friendly unlike my other tutorials. It's mainly about blender, of course, no surprises here, but also some other software. I have a uh, I have a list here and feel free to subscribe right away right now because after watching this tutorial you will probably Obviously, we're going to start off by rendering 360 degrees mountain view. Let's go to this tab, press add terrain. Alpine Fractal, it's a little bit slower than usual Fractal Terrain. You'd better have a good computer anyway. And by the way, this is Terragon software, very cool. Uh, click on Add Cloud Layer, Add Cirrus Layer and Auto Cumulus Layer. The rest is just uh, tweaking the elevation of sunlight. Something like this will work pretty well. And in the Cameras tab, uh, we'll need to tweak the camera settings. Enable Spherical. And in the render tab, let's crank up the resolution to something like 4K by 2K and just render it out. You'll see these tiny dots and let's rewind. Gosh, it seems like uh, the camera is underneath the mountain, but I think it looks pretty stylish. Let's save the result, obviously in 32-bit EXR format. Basically, we need this EXR to create the animated panorama in after effects so create a new composition and a new adjustment layer call it light what i'm going to do is just tweak the rgb curves and also desaturate the image a bit press t alt click on the opacity and type wiggle to comma 80. that means that the opacity value will flicker two times a second it will fluctuate between 0 and 80, and now we have to add this to render queue. Set the format uh, to open EXR because what goes in should go out, 32 bit format. And after you set the destination file, uh, just click render. This is normal, by the way, this happens from time to time, just don't worry. And once you have these photos in place, and I hope that you're somewhat familiar with the photo scanning workflow. There is nothing special about it, just take a bunch of photos of the object. You know the rest, just load all images into Reality Capture. By the way, it's a little bit cheaper on Steam than on its own website. And it's a deal. Right, I'm just gonna click Align Images, wait for a little while. And you should get something like this. The point cloud that you can use to reconstruct the geometry later on, texture it, right? Right, the next step is to click on this normal detail button to reconstruct the geometry and export the mesh to be used in Blender, because this is just the pre-production, so to speak, before the actual fun in Blender. Just be patient, please, okay? Someone is knocking at the door. Go away! Sorry about that. Uh, this is our model in ZBrush. You can sculpt it a little bit. One cool thing that we can use ZBrush for is clean up the model using Clip Rectangle Brush. And the next thing I'm gonna do is decimate the model. Click Preprocess Current. And by the way, ZBrush decimation is, I think, the best ever. Just look at this. The initial model was 6 million polygons, and this is 100,000 polygons. Quite impressive. And Blender, not even close. And pretty soon we'll need to reproject textures in Reality Capture. Before that, uh, what we can do is import the low res model into 3ds Max and unwrap it. Go to modifiers, press U three times for unwrap UV, select all polygons, just like this. Click mapping, flatten, and it should work. Sometimes it works, I'm sure. Just we'll have to wait a little bit longer this time. I'm sure it will work in three, two, one. Just damn it. Fine. 
Okay, let's segue into Blender. Plan B, select the polygons, hit U, Smart UV Project. Blender is not responding. How strange, uh, but it will. Not sure about that. Hooray, we unwrapped the object. Now we can go back into Reality Capture. First, let's export OBJ and generate texture from photos in Reality Capture. This is our initial model. Let's now import the low res unwrapped model and reproject the textures. And before you asked, my microphone is called Blue Yeti. I also have a pop filter. All right, after projecting textures, it looks like this. Let's export the mesh and take it into Blender. But first, maybe let's just bake all maps. I will show you a cool application called XNormal. Load your high resolution model and your low resolution model. In the settings, assign the maps that you want to be baked. Uh, the rest is just pressing the button, waiting till it renders. It's free, by the way, which is very cool, in my opinion. So now we have baked the occlusion, the normal, and the displacement map for the shack. And the only thing we need right now is a Lord of the Rings style mountain. What I want to do is use the radial gradient node to influence uh, the advanced Perlin noise. I don't want it to be the landscape. I want it to be just lonely mountain type of thing. And let me explain what I'm doing here. This is the erosion node. It can be used to erode things. And you can tweak the erosive power, post channeling erosion, all that stuff, sediment carry amount. I usually set it very high. And afterwards, you can select the slope and uh, blend different colors based on the slope of this mountain. Uh, to be able to preview the result, you'll need... Uh, by the way, just before I forget, we may need a human figure for the scale reference or whatever. My composition-wise, it's a very good practice also to have a very strong center of interest. And human figures in general make for a very strong center of interest, usually. I think that casual wear will look nice. And by the way, this is Make Human application. It's free. Hooray! Not that... Other things aren't free. Okay, and to be able to preview the, the result, we'll need the overlay view node. Hit OK, go into the 3D view. It looks, ama it looks amazing. Now we can crank up uh, the resolution and write outputs to disk. We need mesh output, overlay view, and bitmap output. Right, folks, we're halfway done and probably We'll need a fractal somewhere, but probably not. What I also usually do is play a little bit of Diablo in between recording sessions, whatever. And one last thing before launching Blender is to design our brand identity, a kind of watermark or whatever. In Krita, you have this weighted smoothing algorithm that helps you to smooth out the strokes. It's perfect. It's even better than Lazy Mouse and ZBrush. It's amazing. And save it in PNG format. The PNG logo should be good on its own, but usually I vectorize the images. Tracing results. Set preset to sketched art. Expand. Now we have this vectors in Illustrator. And let's export it to SVG. Because, surprise, Blender can import vector graphics. And now we can launch Blender and import all the objects that we have modeled, generated, whatever. Let's put together a quick scene, just demonstrate a concept that you can unleash the creativity and become a multi-potential light who uses all kinds of different software. Okay, just enable this scalable vector graphics plugin and import your logo. And probably you thought it is a kind of a joke, but it isn't, trust me. It's just a new, playful, postmodern style of tutorials. Soon all tutorials be like this, so get used to it. All right, so I imported the mountain and the shack and the logo. Now let's bring in the panorama and rotate it a little bit. 
till we catch a glimpse of the sun, so to speak, and set the color management to filmic. I'm tempted to just shut up and leave this last step up to you, because I'm sure you followed through and you will create something outstanding based on this direction. Okay, I will say one last thing, that everything looks better with depth of field, so experiment with uh, shallow depth of field in Blender, maybe animate the camera, and to drive this home, I'm gonna render this animation, and uh, I'm sure it will be amazeballs. Thanks, by the way, for following through to this point. This is a glitch tool that you can find on GitHub somewhere. It works in your browser, and you can glitch images. That's what it does. So basically the process is like this. I glitch every individual frame of this animation. To recombine it later on in Blender or in other software, I love the result. So far this workflow really pays off and uh, the last thing I will do is download a bunch of ambient sounds from Freesound and create a multi-track in Adobe Audition and also launch this virtual piano, though my instrument of choice is a guitar, obviously, and in the next tutorial we'll take a look at some chords. Stay tuned, I appreciate you.